Okay guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, uh, we're going to talk about how to design a bug out bag or how to plan out a bug out bag. And we're going to talk about what you should include, what you shouldn't include in your bug out bag. Uh, this is partially an original video. I've been thinking about making this uh, for probably a couple months now because I've watched so many videos where a lot of people just don't get it. But a big thing a lot of people fall into, even experienced people, I've fell, fallen into this trap a couple times, is you're you're planning a kit, you're planning a bug out bag or a get home bag or a I'm never coming home bag and got all these different phrases. Um, and you know, and a lot of people first they're concerned about what they should name their bag or what it falls under. And then after that they're always arguing with themselves on should I include this, should I shouldn't include this, should I pack this, should I, sh should I not pack this, um, am I forgetting anything, should I pack, you know, and it's this constant which again, it should be because it is kind of a learning process and over the years and over time, you just kind of tailor the bag to fit yourself or suit yourself. So that's the first thing to keep in mind is don't just follow a run of the mill list, you know, pack this, 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 this. Um, maybe starting out might be um, helpful, but what you'll run into is you'll tally up a bill of a couple hundred dollars and you'll be like, okay, well, I'm packing this, but why? I have this, but why? I don't know how to use this. I, I'm packing this, but do I really need it? And again, you kind of fall in the same trap and then you start tailoring it to yourself. And maybe some of that gear that somebody else told you to buy, you don't need. And then you try and sell it and it's a big hassle. <clears throat> so I've come up with probably one of the simplest ways to design any type of survival kit. Um, and that's what I call them. Whether it's get home bag, 72 hour bag, bug out bag, inch bag, whatever. Um, I kind of use just a generic like survival pack um, for everything. But the way I plan this, uh, like I said, kind of applies to everything. Now, the bigger the kit I want it to be, the more the more complete or the more advanced or complex it will be. And then if I make a little like Altoids type survival kit, it will include as many of these subjects as I'm going to talk about, but with more limited capability. This to me seems to be the most simplest way to make a bug out bag. So um, I do this, I do want this to be sort of an instructable type video. Um, so if you feel so inclined, you know, grab a piece of paper, copy paper, a dry erase board, whatever, and a writing implement, and feel free to write this down as I talk about it, and then start thinking about items that either you have in your bag or you've heard people say that you need in your bag, and try figuring out which categories that gear item would fit into. So there's seven categories. I limited it to seven, um, kind of seven broad categories because seven, it just seems more bite-sized. You know, you got seven areas as opposed to 30 different subjects, right? So the areas, defend yourself, protect yourself, fix yourself, hydrate yourself, feed yourself, house yourself, house yourself and transport yourself seven categories pretty simple and you might be like well he didn't say food he didn't say water he didn't say one tool option he didn't say bushcraft he didn't say survival knife he didn't say you know and you're getting all all confused and it's because you're you're trying to think inside this box of parameters that somebody else has told you so let's talk through these and you'll kind of see how simple it is to plan a survival kit. So again, this isn't going to be a list recommendation. It's not going to say you need the specific list items because that would be counterintuitive to what I just addressed earlier. <clears throat> so defend yourself. Defend yourself pretty much means um, a, a way to defend or protect yourself against foreign threats, most likely people and or animals. Um, so that could mean a pistol. It could mean a slingshot. It could mean a knife. It could mean a baton, a, like a police baton. It could mean pepper spray. It could mean, you know, nunchucks or something. It could mean a, you know, a samurai sword. Who knows? Defend yourself, though. Having a way to defend yourself. And the reason I put that at the top is because the first three categories, you can't really control those situations. They can happen in a split second. Somebody could walk through this door right now and I would need a way to defend myself, but I wouldn't necessarily need a way to house or to feed or to hydrate myself. So that makes sense. The second 
subject is protect yourself. And you might be thinking like, didn't we just cover protect yourself? We just covered defend yourself. Protect yourself is personal protective equipment is what I call it. And like starting from the top, it could mean a baseball hat to protect yourself from the sun. It could mean a hard hat. It could mean a, a bulletproof helmet. It could mean safety glasses. It could mean goggles. It could mean hearing protection. It could mean a uh, breathing apparatus like a, uh, a gas mask or a dust mask. Uh, it could mean durable, strong clothing. It could mean elbow and knee pads. It could mean fire resistant clothing. It could mean steel toe boots. Moving farther down the spectrum, it could mean an inflatable raft if you're going waterborne. It could mean a, uh, an emergency parachute if you're going airborne. <clears throat> it could mean uh, a PFD, a personal flotation device, if you're, again, going waterborne. Things that will protect your body. Moving to the next one is fixing yourself. And the reason why PPE, personal protective equipment, is good to have or important to have is the more you can protect yourself it's kind of you're being proactive and protecting yourself so then that way you you lessen the need to fix yourself so under fix yourself first is like a first aid kit trauma kit of course you know everybody might know that but past that it's um ways to treat blisters ways to treat ailments uh are you a diabetic or do you suffer from high blood pressure do you suffer from um you know, heartburn, um, do you have maybe digestive problems, maybe a way to treat diarrhea, a way to treat constipation, um, a way to treat migraines. A lot of people, they get really bad migraines, throw some Advil or throw some ibuprofen. Uh, things that maybe aren't life-threatening, that thing, but things that are hindering your ability to perform at 100% effectiveness. Um, so it goes above and beyond just a first aid kit. Um, it go, it also covers things to fix your body or to heal your body, you could say. Um, so those are the three critical ones, in my opinion. After that, hydrate yourself. Um, personally, in my opinion, again, I might not be following the three uh, the three levels of survival, they're the pyramid type thing. You can survive three seconds, three minutes, three hours, that thing. I might not be following that specifically, but personally, again, this is just kind of how humans operate. I can, I'll get thirsty before I'll get hungry. And most of the time I'll get thirsty before I need a place to shelter. Not all the time, but mostly. And you just always seem to get thirsty. And again, people will say, oh, you can survive three days without water. I've tried that before. And first, I didn't make it to three days. Second, you just feel really uncomfortable. You feel nauseous. You feel tired. You feel um, weak. You know. And again, it kind of goes back to healing yourself, fixing yourself. If you're dehydrated, you won't be at 100% effectiveness. So you, you won't be worth that much. Hydration, to me, is really important, especially if you're on the move. So under hydration, it can mean water bottles, uh, ways to transport, ways to collect water, ways to treat water, a water filter, stereo pens, boiling, like a pot to boil in, chemicals, whatever, uh, canteens. And then also under hydrating yourself, it can mean Gatorade or electrolyte mixes, teas, coffee, maybe morale booster type drinks. Um, all that's under hydrate yourself. So the next area is feeding yourself. Okay, feeding yourself to me is ranks really high. So I see a lot of these bug out bags and they have traps and they have snares and they have a survival gun like a 22 or something to hunt small game and they have slingshots and all these alternative ways to hunt. But what are they missing? They're missing food. You know, so they're packing all that stuff to gather something that they could conversely be carrying with them to begin with. Now a lot of people will say, well if the situation's super long eventually you run out of food. Yeah, it's true, but guess what? Say you pack five pounds of food or four pounds of food in your bag and the situation is so long that you end up eating all that food, well, guess what? First, it will extend the time that you need to resort to hunting or fishing or trapping, etc. The other thing is once you eat up all your food, guess what? You have a lighter pack. That's just how I think about it. But the first thing is packing consumables, uh, um, snacks, stuff that you can just eat on the move. 
uh, energy bars, goo energy chews, all like mixed nuts, almonds, peanuts, um, just things that you can crack open and as you're moving, eat or drink. Uh, beyond that, it would mean kind of more processed, either freeze dried, MREs, canned goods, etc. They all have pros and cons. MREs don't taste that good, but they're pretty much ready to eat, or so they claim. Uh, freeze dried tend to be a lot lighter and more compact, but require more process and more processing, and you also need a source of water. Uh, canned goods again are really heavy, but you can just eat them out of cans. So they all have pros and cons. I'm not saying one's better than the other. They all have pros and cons that you got out you have to accommodate for. So if all you pack is ready to eat foods, well maybe you don't need to pack a stove. So maybe in that system you'll equal out. And other people might pack all freeze dried foods, but then they'll have to pack fuel and a stove and a way to collect and boil water and heat water up. Um, past feeding yourself from food, you know it is prudent to pack ways to trap animals. You know, and people might be like, oh, a 22, so I can hunt. Uh, they might be like, oh, I'm an emergency fishing kit. You know, and all that's pretty useful. Um, maybe some ready-made snares. But again, all that stuff is, your success rate is very low. Because there's professionals that do it day in and day out, and their success rate is pretty low. You know, housing yourself. And a lot of people say shelter. And I say housing yourself because, um, for a couple reasons. First... A house doesn't just mean a roof over your head. Shelter kind of means just a roof over your head. Um, why I say house yourself is not only a roof over your head, but if it's cold, a way to keep warm. If it's hot, a way to keep cool. Um, the other thing under housing yourself is proper clothing. Because a lot of times if you have the proper clothing and you're walking, 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 and you're getting super tired, you don't have to set up this elaborate camp or this elaborate shelter and waste tons of calories and time. If you have the proper clothing, you can pretty much just boom, fall on the ground, take your pack off, pass out or fall asleep for a couple hours wake up and keep moving if you have the proper clothing so under housing yourself is uh, think of clothing as a uh, as a mobile house so it's um, a way to keep comfortable as you're on your move and then also think in terms of whether it's a tent a tarp uh, a teepee maybe it's tools that you can use to make a wilderness type lean-to and stuff like that um, and then maybe ways to start fire to keep yourself warm or different ways to keep yourself cool. Um, so housing yourself. One thing to keep in mind under housing yourself and shelters is keep in mind and factor in how long does it take and how many calories will it take to make. Because there's some people that are saying, I'll just make a wilderness shelter out of branches and natural materials. First, you're dependent on nature. Um, and second, that takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. Um, and that energy, if it takes you four hours to make some type of shelter that you're going to sleep in for eight hours, that those four hours you could use to getting yourself closer to where you need to be going. So a factor that, how quick is that shelter, how quick the shelter is to erect. So some of those pop-up pens, you can just pop it open or a bivy, crawl inside, fall asleep for a couple hours, pack it back up and move. Um, then the last thing, transport yourself. And uh, starting, you know, a lot of people have the assumption that they're going to be on foot, which I guess is a good baseline to start at, but don't assume that you need to be on foot. And a lot of people forget that. They're like, well, it's a bugle bag and it goes to my back, so that means I'm going to be walking. That's one of the worst things, that's one of the worst ways to think. Um, but at the basic level, proper footwear, um, proper ways to treat blisters and stuff like that because your feet are your wheels, your feet are your mobility or your transportation. Um, it also means navigation equipment. The reason why navigation equipment is under transportation is, you know, any any sailor or any any uh, you know deep sea fisherman or whatever will tell you that, or any pilot will tell you that navigation is one of the important things because if you don't have navigation, you might be going in the zigzag direction instead of a straight line. So you might burn up all your fuel and never make it to your destination. So. The reason I include navigation under transportation is because you can say, we need to go exactly that way, and you can constantly, with navigation gear, you can constantly monitor, yep, we're still going straight, going straight, going straight, and that will reduce time, and it will reduce calories, and reduce a lot of um, you know, other problems, so you don't get lost. Um, past navigation, though, uh, transportation, flashlights, ways to illuminate. Think of flashlights and headlamps as headlights to a car. Uh, it allows you to, at, at night, um, be able to perform tasks, but also move at night. Some people 
with really advanced buggle bags, they might recommend night vision equipment. And if you're getting that fancy, that's pretty cool because that way you can travel under the cover at night, which offers a lot of benefits. Um, so you can move very quietly and very stealth, stealth-like in dark conditions. Um, you know, so it could be night vision equipment. And then also, um, possibly if you're in any type of vehicle, tools and equipment to maintain or repair if anything happens. So if you're on a, on a bike, having a bike repair kit and a spare inner tube. If you're in a car, some basic hand tools and some basic fluids and parts for cars. I could go on and on, but you get the picture. But that's it. That's how easy it is um, to make a bug out bag. And the reason I set it up that way is you actually can think and you can put a certain gear, certain item of gear into a certain category or multiple categories. So for example, a rain poncho, like a nylon rain poncho, it protects yourself from hypo, or from getting super wet. So that could possibly prevent yourself from getting hypothermia. Um, it can also be an instant shelter. You can hunker down in the middle of a rainstorm and be rather comfortable. It can also be a way to house yourself to make a shelter. It could be a way to heal or fix yourself because maybe one of you or your buddy goes down, passes out or something, you can roll them onto that poncho and make a makeshift litter out of it. Um, it can be a way to hydrate yourself because you can hang it and, um, you know, like the hood part, put a couple of rocks in there so that's the lowest point. So it's a big funnel and then you put a pot or some type of water gathering instrument underneath to collect rainwater. Um, you know, again, transporting yourself, you can throw all your gear or extra gear you find into a poncho, wrap it up with some 550 quarter bungee cords and make a makeshift backpack out of it. So a poncho, like I said, covers so many of these um, categories. Is it the best thing for one situation? No, but because it covers so many categories, it's a very multi-purpose multi -purpose item. Um, so the reason I set it up like this is because it allows you to focus on given goals and it allows you to take a piece of gear, something as nimble as say a walking stick. So maybe you include a walking stick. First, it, you could possibly defend yourself with it. You know, if it's a three foot, like one of those cold steel walking sticks or even like just a durable uh, stick, you, you could defend yourself with it. Um, you could protect yourself from it from um, maybe it's windy or icy so you don't fall and hurt yourself. It could be used to heal or fix yourself because it could possibly be used to splint a broken leg or an arm. You could break it in half and use it as a splint. Um, and then also if you sprain an ankle or something, it gives you something to lean on like a crutch. Um, it can be used to house yourself in the regard that it can be used as like a ridge pole or part of your shelter. And again, it can be used to transport yourself because if you're on foot, it does, you do, uh, reduce the amount of calories burned when you have a set of walking sticks. A lot of people don't know that, but it can it can make transporting yourself on foot a little bit easier. And that, that's a walking stick and it covered like five of the seven areas. So um, hopefully you guys gleamed and learned something from this video. Um, I think it's a pretty simple way to design and set up a bug out bag. And again, it allows you to focus and have like specific goals in mind and things you want to accomplish with a certain item. And that way it makes it a lot easier to figure out whether or not you should pack it or not. Um, in the end, always understand a bug out bag is a bag of compromise. That's what I call it. Um, it's never going to be perfect. It's You're always going to be limited on supply. You're always going to be limited on capability. You're always going to be limited on what you have and what you don't have. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, make sure to give a big thumbs up below. And again, if you're a new subscriber, go back to my homepage or watch some of my current videos. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. But we'll catch you on the next video.